Thank you, Mr. Chairman. REZ 2024 08 is a request at 4374 River Road, approximately 15 acres for its current R21 to PD plan of development. That's uh, both these and utilities. If you recall, a couple years ago, this request came through to go from R21 to RA and was ultimately denied by the Board of Commissioners 3 2 in their vote. It is uh, within the county uh, urban service area and suburban character area on the land use map. And again, the TRC analyzed this one, all the standard governing uh, zoning powers. Existing low density, residential character, you see here the uh, availability of the county utilities that were provided at, at the onset of Pine Grove campus, uh, a little bit to the west here. And topography of the, uh, of the property here, you'll note, does have wetlands in the rear. It drops off significantly, about 37 feet overall. It's 1,300 feet or so to the tree line there. Uh, and therefore, based on the site plan and the conditions in your packet, staff is recommending approval with those conditions. Um, this is the proposal for the center line road that you'll see on the overall site plan here in just a moment. This is that overall site plan, and I'm going to zoom in here. One of the conditions you'll note or considerations is lot one here on the north. That is an exterior lot, and therefore it needs to have 30 foot setback along that side. This is the third and final site plan that was developed uh, just recently, so a minor change that we've stepped uh, in, in the applicant to work together with. Um, <coughs> again, overall, 5,000 square foot lots. You can notice one of the other conditions that we're proposing. Interior landscaping along lot 55 green space there. Uh, staff is recommending two trees per 100 linear feet. It's in accordance with our existing landscaping. We're not requiring any shrubbery or fencing. Uh, feeling that addition of trees can help blend in with the surrounding areas. Uh, that's, a, that's a conservation condition along the uh, overall boundaries of the property and this interior space here. And again, you see an access to the rear of the property, stormwater drain, and also green space to be used for uh, trails, picnic area, things of that nature. This is the overall site plan from a close up area. With the adjacent properties, and then I'm going to zoom out here to the immediate areas along River Road just to give you an idea and scale of the proposed density of 54 lots in relation, and then again, 2,000 square foot, uh, 2,000 foot view. You know, it's Pine Grove campus to the northwest, and then Venus to the southeast there, and then the upcoming utilities. Uh, TRC analyzed a bunch of other single family homes that have been developed within Lowndes County in more than years. Those are also listed in your packet on page two. You'll see some of those proposed neighborhoods and setbacks that were proposed and approved throughout the years. Uh, these are their property locations in addition to the subject property uh, location. These are some of the preliminary plat notes on the plan uh, from the applicants. Most of this is platting language. Uh, you will note the number seven here are some of the setbacks. And this is one of the areas that TRC and the applicant differ a little bit on their setbacks. Second here. The next one here, the, the notes regarding lots of adjacent wetlands. This is from our engineering department. Again, this is more final planning language. Uh, house sizes, parking, and green space are the notes at the bottom here. I'm going to take a look at proposing 1,200 to 1,500 square feet for two car garages. Um, you see, you know, 54 lots there. Click the green space. What they're proposing. So, with that being said. These are the TRC recommended conditions and the considerations. Uh, again, considerations given the fact that this is the first effort to provide this type of density in this area. Uh, considerations of setting a precedent with lot sizes. Just again, additional considerations. Green space plus the mailboxes, things that are required when the neighborhood is collaborated uh, currently and their locations. Uh, again, green space, wetlands, on street parking is probably the one that we've heard the most of, given the fact that it's in a single point of ingress and egress. Um, that was one point that engineering, fire, planning, and zoning, uh, code enforcement all had a bit of concern about. Again, under a plan of development, uh, site standards can be flexed a little bit. And there is a change at the uh, state level with the International Fire Code allowing up to 120 lots on a single point of ingress and egress. So we have a bit of a crossroads right now with overall development, development standards in the current code. So this is kind of the first to cross that barrier and why we have uh, conditions and considerations. 
for this property. With that being said, again, staff are recommending approval with the conditions listed there in the seven conditions. Debbie, just a point of clarification. Uh, conditions, I understand, we have those all the time. How does how do additional considerations relate to conditions? Are they they, they are points to consider by this body if you would like to add as an additional condition. Okay. So they are not conditions of this body. They are not conditions, no, sir. They are just them. considerations that, that staff has. Okay. And wanted to make uh, aware for the planning commission. Thank you. Just want to be here. Commissioners, any uh, any questions for staff on this one? I've actually got one. Yes, sir. I want to understand that the school is right down the road from it. Is, is, is a, there's existing water or the sewer? There's existing water, yes, sir. The sewer is down to the southeast of this property on Cat Creek. The applicant is proposing to run that sewer line okay. to this property. There's a force main on River Road, but you don't just have a force main. I have, I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, would there be anything stopping them from putting in additional 10 lines on this front to existing lines? Those are R21. They would be allowed to have 10 additional lines. Okay. So there, that's not no, those are the standard R21 lines. Any other questions for staff on this case? Thank you, J.D. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry, Mr. Oh, yes, Commissioner Miller has one. Um, J.D., I know you said that one of the uh, preliminary flat notes, number seven, there was uh, something that was a, a little bit of a discrepancy between what they listed versus what you were recommending. Did you give a little clarity on that? Yes, sir. They are proposing, I believe, 45-foot front yard setbacks. Staff is only proposing 35-foot based on the roadway. Um, there's a difference in side yard setbacks, 6 feet versus 8 feet. Again, having talked with uh, multiple members of the TRC, staff felt comfortable more at 8, so there's a slight discrepancy, but this is what they're proposing, and that's why the staff's conditions uh, are recommendations uh, that are different from those. Let me get clear again, though, also, if you don't mind. Yes, so, uh, the developer proposed 45 foot from center line of the street, and you're saying 35, correct? Yes, sir. So, you gave them relief on that? Yes, sir. And they also requested 20 foot setback from the property line, and that's basically, and you're saying. Tw uh, yeah. 28, uh, excuse me. So, so, I read 35 would actually put it closer than the 20 foot from the property line. 20 foot rear setback line is, is allowed for the interior lot. PD standards require 30 foot on all exterior lots. Uh, I believe the site plan when the updated did reflect that with the exception of that one side of uh, lot one. Yes. I, I understand that the, the 20 foot from the property line is what they proposed. It looks like they may get some relief on that. Or which? Well, I'm just saying, I mean, if I'm reading this correctly, if they proposed 45 foot from center line of the street and you're, and you're saying 35 foot from center line? Am I reading that correctly? Correct. That, that's so they did get relief on that. Again, yeah. that's where the discrepancy is. Our, our recommended yeah. condition is 35. Yeah. But again, it's ultimately the site plan that guides the plan development. So if it goes forward with a 45 foot, then that would be the setback. Okay. Staff is just considering a 35 instead of a 45. Okay. Fair enough. And that's the additional consideration, but. Yes, sir. The additional consideration is in that discrepancy. If they want to roll with 45 foot front yard setbacks, then. <coughs> Which is approved, that's fine. But staff said we should have to put it to 35. Okay, fair enough. Does the county have a threshold for two instances similar to the city's? The, the standard threshold is 24 lots on a single point of ingress and egress. After that, you do, you do up to two points of ingress and egress. International Life Safety Code, Fire Code kicks in as well. Uh, you've got remoteness regarding the distance that those uh, entrances need to be apart from each other. Under a plan of development, one of the codes, 40602B, I believe, allows for flexibility of some of those standards, and that's why staff says we see what you're proposing, our consideration is still to add a secondary point. Um, and then one of those conditions being no on street parking to combat the single point of ingress and egress. Should be there an emergency arise, and emergency vehicles need to get down this road. On street parking, uh, vehicles may be damaged, life safety personnel might not be able to access the uh, victim at that time. Any other questions for staff? I have not heard a, a site plan for the actual house itself, but they are proposing uh, approximate square footage. Um, 
based on that, I would, I would assume it could be, but I believe the applicants are here and can better answer that. Just that fact. All right, then we will now enter the public hearing portion on this matter. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak in favor of this case? So please come forward. Set your name and address for the record, please. I'm Clint Joyner at 3101 Rocky Ford Road. And uh, Mr. Willis, right now we are surfing on one-story homes somewhere between 1250 and 1500 square feet. All of them would have a two-car garage, which will give you plenty of parking inside the garage and also the parking pad in front of the garage. Just like the normal house anywhere else, really, that has a two-car garage. So you'll have two cars in the garage, and you'll have enough space on the parking pad out front of the garage for another two cars. Okay? Um, I do need to get some clarification on that front setback, uh, Mr. Dillard. So maybe we can talk later on that if that's okay, sir, just to make sure. Anyway, uh, gentlemen, I, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your, your research that you've done on this. The first comment I want to make to you is to let you know, if you didn't already know, that Lowndes County is growing. It is growing with leaps and bounds. I spoke with Mr. Uh, Representative Dexter Sharper this afternoon, and he made a comment to me. He said, Valdosta is in a crisis. And what he means by that is because of affordable, safe housing. That's what he means. We are in a lack of affordable and safe housing. I also spoke with the executive director of Alasta um, Lowndes Development Authority. I spoke with Andrea. She told me that we all know that in 2025 that um, the Walmart dairy is coming on perimeter and um, Highway 84. There's some 390 jobs coming to that. Georgia Florida Roofing, they're coming. Uh, which is an asphalt shingle company. They're going to employ 135 more jobs this summer. You've got Ardlass out on Rocky Ford Road. They are doing another 150,000 square foot addition, $200 million. That's going to bring another 150 jobs to the community. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the governor is going to be here tomorrow for that ribbon cutting, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Prince Co., they're a, um, uh, a, a pipe manufacturer. They're bringing in another 40 jobs, and this is all coming from her. But she didn't mention anything about, and we all know that the F-35s are coming. And they're going to need places to stay, too. Um, she told me that if I would to make a comment to you, so I'm quoting her. She said, affordable and workforce housing is the important to the recruitment of industries in, into by Austin Lowndes County. The average wage per person is $44,899. And the median household income is 52821 She said that industries want to make sure their employees have affordable and safe housing to live in. She also told me that she already knew that there was a crisis going on with affordable, safe housing. She told me that the Industrial Authority has already contacted someone independent to come to Valdosta to look and see what the problem is and what we can do to help build more affordable housing. I'm pretty certain that the man or woman that's making $45,000 a year can't pay $300,000, $350,000 for a new home. I, I don't think that's happening. Do you know how many houses, and I'm not a preacher, I'm not going to take up a contribution after this, okay? But do you know how many new constructions there are north of Clydeville all the way up to the county line each way. Do you know how many new constructions there are under $300,000 right now? Five. There are five new constructions under $300,000. Our goal is for this subdivision to not go over $250,000. We are trying to get down there where more people can afford you know, I, I've been a developer since 2007. I blame myself. But it's time to make it right. And it's time for these people to maybe get out of a rental house and be able to afford a house uh, for themselves. Um, you know, these lots that we're looking at, they are actually bigger than most of Nelson Hill lots. But yet Nelson Hills continues to be the most sought-after subdivision 
in North Lowndes County. Now ask yourself a question, why? Because it is a nice subdivision. Yeah, it's small. Not in number, but in size. But it's what people can afford. Um, the lots that we're submitting tonight are larger than Nelson Hill. Nelson Hill, some of them lots are 4,500. The ones that we're proposing are 5,000. And J.D., you did a great job. You took the, some of the research I did because this is not the first time something like this has been brought to you. This has been going on in Lowndes County for uh, many years. You have Nelson Hill. You have North Lake, Barrington, Daniele Place, and Lake Park, which has 30-foot lots. You have Hamilton Point off Guest Road that has 40-foot lots. Heather Woods, Glen Laurel, Coventry Villas, and, and a lot more. But the thing is that in these subdivisions, they're all built out. They're sold. There's no more left. You know, um, some of you may think that this subdivision may be out of character for the area. I, I myself don't think so. If you want to, let's talk about out of the character. Let's look at the $300 million glass plant that was built off Rocky Ford Road and agricultural land. In my mind, that is out of character. However, I know it's needed. I'm not against it because it brought some 300 jobs to the community. The apartment complexes that's going up south on Valdale, y'all know which ones I'm talking about, the huge apartment complexes. In my opinion, that's out of character. But it's needed because we need places to live. Um, how about the church building going up Bowdell Road? There's not another church building on Bowdell Road. It's out of character. However, I'm the last person to go to complain about a church being built. It's needed. Maybe we all need more church. I'm speaking for myself. Um, if you want to talk about out of character, how about Pine Grove Elementary, Pine Grove Middle School being built way out there? That was built out of character. Or, yeah, out of character, but it's needed. We need more schools. The area that we picked here is not something that I just closed my eyes and pointed to a map to say I want a development here. I looked at this area because it is in the uh, comprehensive planning, future growth of Lowndes County. It's already in there. I looked at it because water, Lowndes County water, is already on this side. I looked at it because the sewer is just right around the corner, and like J.D. said, I'm going to be, go get it and bring it to it. Um, I've already talked about the comprehensive growth plan, the water, the sewer. Some of you may think we may have a traffic problem because of the school being maybe a mile down the road. Well, the way I look at it is these people that are coming in, if they can find something in that area, especially for the F-35s, they're going to go down River Road every day anyway to take their kids to school. Because most of the people that are buying these houses are first-time homeowners or with small children. And in regards to the setback, and I, I'm, going to, I'm going to leave it with you, but in regards to the setback, we are asking for six-foot setbacks. But I've got a plan in mind that I think that may work. Most of all new houses in this size, the air conditions are put on the side of the house. Which is air conditioning, I, I, I'm not an inspector, but I believe they have to be at least 18 inches away from the house. And then the air conditioning itself is somewhere around 36 inches. I'm proposing that we move these air conditions and put them behind the house. So that will save four foot right there in case a fire truck had to get through. Um, so I, I think that right there would solve that setback case. So if there's any questions you guys may have, and if I can answer, I will do my best. Thank you, sir. Any questions for Mr. Jordan? Oh, I got a question. Uh, with as many as going in here, what are you going? Is it just going to be buffers on the outside, or are you going to build an outer fence? Or yeah, uh, Mr. Willis. Ninety-nine percent of smaller houses like this, the contractor and the developer would get together. And they will put a six-foot privacy fence behind the houses. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you going to be selling these lots? Are you going to be um, both? Building if you're going to both. Be sold? I will be building some houses, and I will be selling some lots. Yes, sir. And uh, Mr. Miller, I've been in real estate since 1997 here in Lowndes County. I've been developing since 2006. I'm telling you right now that these lots are going to fly off the market.
because it is so sought after for new constructions in this price range. It doesn't exist. And that's because of, you know, you can't even, groceries have doubled the past few years. Y'all know, not doubled, but it's gone up 20, 30 percent. But what I can tell you that since 2014, development costs, costs have tripled in number. Tripled. And I'm telling you that for 100% fact. I know. I got the price for this. <laughs> any, any, other any, other questions? Questions? any other questions, Mr. Jordan? Yes. I think those are going to range 12 to 1,400 square feet. I'm thinking 1,250 to 1,500. And all of them with a two car garage. All right. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Thank you. We have no time left for anyone who would like to speak in favor of this case. So is there anyone here this evening who would like to speak against this case? Anyone here this evening that would like to speak against this case? Seeing no one, that will close the public hearing portion of this matter. Commissioners, any final questions or discussion? Commissioner, my discussion would be, I'd, just, I'd like to just echo some of Mr. Joyner's thoughts. I know that I'm familiar with the Governor of Workforce Development issue about developing uh, houses that are quote affordable, if you will, and attainable at the same time. And so, I mean, everything you said, I believe, is followed. Thank you, sir. All right. I will seek a motion on this matter, please. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. The case has before us this evening, REZ 2024-08, the River Road. It is uh, currently R21 has proposed to get rezoned to a PD development. I would like to make a motion of approval. And with that, I'd like to look at conditions and make some, some, some modifications on the conditions, sir. Okay. The Go first ahead. one is new places, two family dwellings. I'll allow I have no problem with that. Side yard setbacks. Uh, it is proposed to have eight foot on side yard. I'd like to give two foot relief to both sides and say six foot on both sides. Uh, I really have no issue with, with number three. Number four, just for clarity on that, it says that the dwellings are within 16 feet of each other. Fences are not allowed to be constructed in the side yard between them. And I, just, just for clarity on that, uh, I think it needs to be stated that the fences cannot <coughs> come further than the rear quarter of the house, but they can attach at the property line. Molly, you got that? Okay, you got that. I have no problem with number So it can be attached at the rear quarter of the house? It cannot come any closer than the rear quarter of the house, but they can go to, they can be in the center of the property line. Yes, sir. I have no issue with five with the accessory building, really another with six with landscaping. Seven, on the street parking. I, J.D., you and I have discussed about this. I don't know who necessarily monitors that. I know that I just got through doing a little project, and I think the worst part about uh, on the street activity is basketball goals and not necessarily parking on the street. I, I get where you're going with that. I'm just saying I don't know who monitors that going forward, but I get where you're at on that. That's all thing I have. So I do have a motion of approval on this with those <coughs> seven slight uh, conditions and the three modifications, sir. So, Mr. Bailey, you're okay with number seven? I, so you're, you're really modifying condition two and four? I, I, I think I just want to voice number seven. I just don't okay. know who monitors that. The on street parking, I don't know who monitors right. that. So your, your changes will be the condition two and four. Is that That's correct? correct, sir. Okay. And J.D., you have those comments? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We have a motion to recommend approval by Commissioner Bailey uh, with changes to conditions two and four as noted by staff. Is there a second? Second. And we have a second by Commissioner Webb. All those in favor of the motion to recommend approval with the changes to conditions two and four, please raise your hand. Any opposed? Thanks, sir. Um, if I may, yes, sir. My, my, my biggest concern is the fire safety issue with the reduction, that two foot reduction, and the set setbacks. It's just you know from a from a density standpoint and a safety standpoint. That's my only concern. Understand? Yeah. I, I get. I get. 